Right, hello once again, this is Jeff Scott with part two of chapter nine for the 152-153 mobile web development iOS class or the SWIFT class for the spring 2015 semester. We left off last time and I had had some errors in my code and what I figured out since then, I think I've got it up here, is um, I had an, for some reason, I had an error in one of my lines of code, and I don't know what it was, but I retyped it, and then everything was okay. And then earlier on in the file, much earlier on, when we were supposed to put in our family name, you can see this about line 40, I spelled family wrong, and then I used it as family name down below, so that's why I was getting that error. But if you see now, if I go and run this, Hopefully it won't take too long. I haven't brought the um, <clears throat> simulator up yet today, but hopefully it won't take too long to come up. It appears to run just fine. In other words, what should happen here in a matter of moments is um, when we run this, it should look oh, where are we? Three, oh, I'll go back a page. Should look like this. <clears throat> Come on. All right, so we should have our fonts in there as mentioned on page 315. Okay, I'm waiting for this to come up. I haven't lost a connection, so I think it's just slow because it's just starting. So they mentioned on 315, it says, Now build and run this app on your device or simulator, and you should see a nice list of fonts. Scroll around a bit, and you'll see that some are higher than others. I don't really care that much about that. So I'm about to go and turn up to page 316 and start on the first um, subcontroller. Like I said, I'm trying to give this a little extra time, see if I can get it to come up. Where is it? It's... Yeah, I lost my connection. Uh, it usually seems to happen the first time or two. Okay, so again, this is my copy, and there's the fonts. And as they show here, you can see that some of them are different sizes as I start to make my way through here. And supposedly that one down at the bottom, that Zapino or Zanfino or whatever it is, is a lot bigger. So you can see now it's, at least for right now, it's pretty much looking the way that I think it's supposed to be looking. All right. So I'm up to page 316 in the book. Our app currently just shows a list of font families and nothing more. We want the ability for a user to touch a font family and see all the fonts it contains. So let's make a new view controller that can manage a list of fonts using Xcode's new file assistant to create a new Cocoa Touch class called Font List View Controller as a subclass. And we'll put some stuff in it. So, I want a new file. I want this to be a Cocoa Touch class. And I want this to be called Font list view controller, and I want this to be a subclass of UI table view controller. And it looks like everything right now looks the way it's supposed to be looking. Click next. I want this to be under fonts, so hopefully it will be. Usually it tends to put it down here, and it did again under my supporting files. Actually, I think it really isn't under the supporting files. I think it just lists it down there. So, all right. <clears throat> so we have class font list view controller, UI table view controller. We have to import UI kit in here for that error to go away. All right. So 
So we've got some variables we have to put in here at the beginning. All right, and as mentioned after this, uh, so I'm on the middle of page 316. The font names property is what we'll use to tell this view controller what to display. We also created a show favorites property that'll be used to let this view controller know if it's showing a list of favorites instead of a list of fonts in a family. The cell point size is used to hold a preferred display size for displaying each font, and the cell identifier is the identifier used for the table view cell in the controller. All right, so we have to we're supposed to go into the view did load method and add some code as shown on the bottom of page 316. So I guess I'll have to add that. All right, so that's all the stuff that you see on the bottom of page 316. The next thing we want to do is to create a utility method for choosing the font to be shown in each row. This is similar to what we have in the root view controller, but it's a different, a little bit different here because rather than holding on to a list of font families in the view controller, we're holding on to a list of font names. And we'll use the UI font class to get each font name as shown on the top of page 317. <clears throat> now it's time for a small addition in the form of a view will appear implementation. In the root view controller, we implemented this method in case the list of favorites might change. The same thing applies here. The view controller might be showing a list of favorites and the user might switch to another view controller or change a favorite or do something else. 
So we need to reload the table view then, and this method takes care of that. <clears throat> okay, up on top, this was supposed to be shows favorites, not show favorites, so that's make that right there. And now, if I click shows here, that will also be correct. The basic idea is that this view controller will normally be passed a list of font names before it displays and that list stays the same the whole time the view controller is around. In one particular case that we'll talk about later, the view controller will need to reload its font list. All right, we have to add a couple more methods in here, and as I oft times do, I'm going to give myself some blank lines, so I've got some room here to do this.
These methods are similar to what we used in the root view controller. So now it's time to switch over to the storyboard and continue on. So I am now on page 318. So I'm going to leave that just in case I need more room later if I have to add more code. I don't remember if I do or not, but I'm going back to the storyboard. There it is. I thought that I changed the size of this to make it a little bit easier to work with, but just in case, there it is. Okay. The storyboard currently contains a table view controller that displays a list of font families, and this is embedded inside a navigation controller. We need to add one new layer of depth to incorporate the view controller that will display the fonts for a given family. Find a view controller, find a table view controller in the object library and drag one out into the editing area to the right of the existing view controller. So the first thing I'm going to do is whoops, give myself some room for this, so I'll move this over to the right. All right, so now again they say find table view controller in here. There it is. I'll take that and drag it out there to the right. Again, I will change its size right away, make it easier to work with that and the other one that's in here. Okay, so let me remove a little bit here to give myself some more room. There we go. So you can see both of them now. There we go. All right. Select the prototype cell. Select the new table view controller and use the identity inspector to set its class to font list view controller. So again, we want to set this class to font list view controller. Okay. Select the prototype cell and then open up the attributes inspector. So there's that. There's the attributes inspector. To make some adjustments, set its style to subtitle. Change its identifier to font name. and its accessory to detail disclosure. Using this detail disclosure accessory will allow rows of this type to respond to two kinds of taps so that the user can trigger two different actions depending on whether they tap the accessory or another part of the row. One way to make the user action in the view controller cause the instantiation and display another view controller is to create a segue between the two of these. This is probably an unfamiliar word to many people, so let's get it out of the way. Segue is really a transition, all right, and the idea is we want a smooth movement from one something to another something. Often segues are used and created entirely within Interface Builder. The idea is that an action in one scene can trigger a segue to load and display another scene. If you're using a navigation controller, the segue can push the next controller onto the navigation stack automatically. Starting right now, we'll be using this functionality in our app. In order for the cells in the root controller to make the font list controller appear, you need to add a couple of segues con connecting the two scenes. This is done by simply control dragging from the first of the from the first of the two prototype cells in the font scene over to the new scene. It says you'll see the entire scene highlight when you drag over it, indicating it's ready to connect, as shown in figure 98.
Mine does not look the way that it does according to what they show in the book here. I should be doing a command D to duplicate and that one, this one up here where it says favorites, this should say titles or title with a subtitle and this one should say favorites as it does but have no subtitle below it. Subtitle, family name. I want to remove that according to what I'm seeing here. Come on, get off. But of course it's not letting me. Well, I'll have to work on that, so. So I'm going to control drag from my title here down into here. Release the mouse button and select show from the selection segue from the pop-up menu. All right, now it says do the exact same thing for the other prototype cell. Creating these segues means that as soon as the user taps any of these cells, the view controller at the other end of the connection will be allocated and made ready. Well, I want to get rid of that subtitle there because I don't think that belongs here. It's not letting me, so I'm just going to try to do it like this. So Hopefully I didn't goof it up with what I just did. Didn't like that either. Like this, but it didn't like the control drag on this one. And a segue show. Okay, so now I've got my two segues right here. Creating these segues means that as soon as the user taps any of these cells, the view controller at the other end of the connection will be allocated and made ready. Save your changes and switch back to rootviewcontroller.swift. So save, go back to rootviewcontroller.swift. Note that we're not talking about our latest class, font list view controller, but instead it's parent controller. This is the place where you'll need to respond to the user touches in the root view table view by preparing the new font list view controller specified by one of the segues you just created for displaying and passing the values it needs to display. All right, the actual preparation of the new view controller is done using the prepare for segue method. Add an implementation of this feature as shown on page 320. So I'm going to put that in and I'm going to stop right now. So we're asked to go down to the bottom of this file and add some code. Again, I probably have, so I was going to say, I probably have some blank spaces in here, so that's fine.
All right, so as you can see, I've got a bunch of errors in here, so I'll have to fix those first. Usually it's in my goal to type quickly that I screw things up, but we'll, we'll fix them. <clears throat> All right. This method uses the sender in other words, the UI table view cell that was tapped to determine which row was tapped and asks the segue for its destination view controller, which is the font list view controller instance about to be displayed. Then some values are passed to the new view controller depending on whether the user tapped the font family, which is section 0, or the favorite cell, which is section 1. We also access the controller's navigation item property in order to set the correct title. It says now we should run the tap, the, the app again. So. Like I said, I hope I didn't screw it up by doing, doing that duplicate, but we're going to find out shortly. It says, you'll see after touching the name of the font family, it shows you the list of all the individual fonts as shown in figure 9.3. Furthermore, you can tap the font's label in the header to go back to the parent controller to, solic to select another font. So it didn't work. So uh, I'm going to stop right here, see if I can fix it, and then come back with part three. So I'll be back with that shortly.